thanks for joining us for another edition of Time for Hope, a faith-based mental health program. Dr. Frida Cruz, your host. And as promised last week, we are joined again today by Reverend Gordon Dalby, and we will be continuing to discuss his book titled, Sons of the Father, Healing the Father Wound in Men Today. Gordon is a gifted and best-selling author of several books, and international retreat and conference speaker. And we really appreciate him taking the time out of his busy schedule to appear on Time for Hope. So I suggest that you check out his other books since he is a very gifted author. Gordon compassionately exhorts men in the book that we're discussing who bear father wounds from being abandoned or neglected, and some from abuse, to seek the redemption and freedom that can be theirs. For more, stay with us. And again, Gordon, it's great having you on Time for Hope. Thanks so much for coming. Oh, it's my pleasure. So we want to pick up. You've defined father a father wound or father wounds that men uh, carry around. You actually say they can become uh, infectious and destructive, uh, but we want to mm. put it out right off uh, with this show. They can be healed. Mm -hmm. it's, not, oh, right. it's not something that mm -hmm. they have to carry around for the rest of their lives, no mm -hmm. matter what age, because you bring out in your book that men need men. I liked that, too. And they need to listen to old men. <laughs> uh, you know, I did learn, and you've learned that, too, I'm sure. Uh, as our parents get older, they get wiser. Uh, and I know that was true of my dad. Mm -hmm. he, 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 he became wiser. He became more loving. He was warmer. He uh, just the way it should have been. Mm -hmm. that, that, mm -hmm. That's the way it happened. But, um, but my father was a good father to me. Uh, he raised three daughters and a son. And um, so... I, I, as you said on the other show, I'm really privileged. I had a great extended family, mm -hmm. had great, you know, my grandparents. Uh, this is all on my mother's side that I'm talking about. And uh, my dad actually, and I see, I've seen this happen often, and you probably have, he married a family. Mm -hmm. He didn't have a family, mm -hmm. uh, okay? So he met my mom, and, and they took him in, like a son, and it, it worked. Uh, and he, so um, there was healing took place with uh, my grandfather because my dad was wounded by his own father. Mm -hmm. Well, I think uh, I had, for example, had 107 men last week at a, at a men's breakfast. I asked them, I said, how many of you, um, when you were 12, 11 years old, did your dad pull you aside to talk to you about girls? The same thing like, I see you're checking out the girls now. That's fine. God made us that way. But I want to talk to you now about what's going on in your body and in your spirit. Because, son, this is going to take a little bit of your life energy, okay? And I want you to hear about it from the man who loves you, not the dudes out on the street. How many think out of 107 men said, yes, my dad approached me about the subject? Very few, I'm sure. Two, one man said he gave me a book. That was it. Finished. The other guy had a pretty good story, but the rest of us, none. I, had, I once had 350 Christian fathers. I said to them, how many of you, when you became a dad for the first time, did your own father come to give you some help, encouragement, support, advice? Maybe came to visit you, called you on the phone, emailed, and he said, son, I want to I give you some ideas about how to be a good dad and what I've learned, because I know it, it's, it's hard to know sometimes. Out of 350 Christian men, only five out of 350 said, my dad was there for me at this critical point in my masculine journey. We're looking at a wound of absence uh, where, where we have, abandonment is the word, really. Our, our, not, not necessarily that they weren't there physically, but emotionally. It was very hard for so many of our fathers to, to stay in that place because we, we didn't, well, you learn how to be a dad by watching your dad and his dad, his dad, and it goes back. And so we carry this kind of like in our hard drive, and, uh, but so often the wound of absence catches up with us because a man will say to me, well, wait a minute, uh, I didn't have a father. He wasn't, he maybe died or he left, or we divorced. And so how can you say I have a father wound? He didn't, he, how, how could he hurt me if he wasn't there? I said, I'll tell you, 
There are two ways to destroy a living organism, two ways to kill a plant. One way, you beat it, smash it, cut it down, it's dead. There you can see it. But there's another way to kill a plant. No. Don't water it. Leave Just it leave alone. it alone. Abandon it. Abandonment kills. And you have to, father, manhood requires fathering. Now that kind of shakes a lot of men because, well, I didn't have a father, where do I go? Well, hello, this is where we begin to, A, number one, begin to say, I've got a wound. Now Jesus said, he said, I didn't come for those who are healthy. Now, he said, I, I, I didn't, didn't come for the guys who got it all together. So uh, I tell the guys in my conferences, when I do conferences, uh, you know, if, if you got, you're healthy, you got all together, you came to the wrong place, I'm sorry. This, this is for men who are broken because we have a Savior who's come for men who are broken. And you have to acknowledge you have a wound. Now, here, here's you've been asking me, like, where, how do we see this wound take place? It's like there's a, we have this fatherless generation out there, and there's another father, clearly described in the Scripture, the father of lies, who calls out from the prince of the air, as the apostle would put it like, son, and, and to a generation of fatherless men, yes, somebody's calling me son, and uh, my dad never called me. So yes, he says, I know you don't feel like a real man. How do you know that? Well, let's just say I've got some inside information, but don't you worry, son, I've got you covered. Now, I've got, I've got here, I've got a couple things you can drink right here, you know, and then it's just light, you know, it's, and, and uh, you know, men will never ask. You can smoke this or do this, and, and all the guys, they'll never, want to know anything more about your wound or anything, you'll be okay. Now, I also know that, uh, you know, you don't really get along well with the ladies, do you? It's kind of scary, isn't it? But don't worry, I've got you covered. I've got this, you just get out of this store downtown, See, it's a little off this thing, it has a couple X's on top of it, you know, and what's that? You say you go to church, well, we don't want anybody to see you do, I know, a couple taps on the internet, she'll come right to you, now look, catch this now, and she will give you whatever you want and you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to smell good or pick up your dirty socks off the floor. She just says, I'll get, see, she doesn't demand anything of you. you all your shame doesn't matter to her. You, she, she accepts you just as you are. Pornography, yeah, without sure. one plea. Yeah. But this is where the draw is. See, this man, we have this shame because we didn't get what we needed from our dads to be men, so we feel this great shame. And the woman, every man knows, the woman has radar. She's going to look right into your soul, and she will know whether you got it or you don't. And she, most of us don't have it. So what are we going to do when the woman gets close enough to find out that we have not got it? Well, we're going to push her away. And we get real close physically, but the next thing you know, we're pushing away. And the father of lies is saying, we, I'll get you, I'll get you a woman. No, no, not one woman, because one woman will get close enough to you to find out that you haven't got it. We don't want that. We'll get lots of women. And this is where men's eyes start going everywhere, because that's the safe woman. And uh, the father guy said, well, I'll tell you what else I can do. We'll, uh, we'll get you a job where you work 50, 60 hours a week, and the guys at the shop, the guys at the office, they're like, oh, what a great man. He works so hard. Never mind that your kids don't see you, and, and, and they're going to despise you for not being there for them. And the last ditch thing the enemy says is, I'll cover your shame. I got religion. I've got all these 10 principles of godly manhood, the four marks of a biblical champion, all these things you got to do to measure up to this God who's going to whip you, of course, if you don't. And that's the father of lies, and that's what we, most of us live under. If a man can feel secure in his manhood, now that's, that's such a huge statement right there, because very few of us do, because we haven't had that arm around the shoulder from a dad that says, ah, I know it's hard, isn't it, son? You know, when I was your age, I blew it a couple times, too. You know, mm -hmm. just, just to be real with us like that, whew, I don't have to measure up to these standards, see? Sadly, most churches just give the guys more standards you need to do to measure up, which is what they, the they past. They look, look for rules and exactly. structure. Exactly, that's what you got as a little boy with daddy, and it's because because nobody's willing to say, guess what? I can't do it. Who will save me from this body oh, taking me yeah. to death? That's the apostle, and uh, in, in Romans seven. So, but to do that, this wound stirs such shame, and for guys, shame is the key word. Shame is that bowling ball in your gut. It says you don't measure up. And guess what? I've had men tell me that their their fathers have actually told them that, and 
in this way, you'll never amount to oh, anything. That's a curse. That's a curse. We yeah. need to, we you'll can break that. You'll never amount to anything. But I've had mm. women have their fathers, and we need to talk a little bit about that. I remember having one that said that she was constantly reminded by her father that she was the ugliest girl he'd mm. ever seen. Those are. Uh, I have a story. I think it's in this book of of a, of a, of a young woman who on her big, big date, you know, and the father was there behind the newspaper. She was waiting for the boy to come, and, and uh, he's here, Daddy, he's here. Have a good time. And behind the newspaper, she needed her daddy to say something. And she, was, she was about 28 years old by the time she came to me. She, she was so insecure. And I said, look, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. You're still living in that living room and thinking you're no good because you didn't get your dad's blessing. I want you to go back into that. Just remember, we're not going to conjure up anything false or, and just say, Jesus, I want you to come in that place in my heart where I, I don't think I'm pretty. I don't think I'm worthwhile as a woman. She called, yes, Jesus, please come in that. Oh, please, Jesus. And she's just poured out her heart to Jesus. And Daddy, and she just, oh, Daddy, why don't you look at me? Would you put that newspaper in? Why can't you look at me? Am I so ugly that you won't even look at me? And she's a very attractive young woman. And I said, Jesus, help this. This is your daughter. Come on, you got to do something yeah. here now. And she said, oh, it's like Daddy's, I'm, like I'm like, I, yeah, hearing him, he says, it's not that you're so ugly, it's that you're so beautiful, you scare me. Lord Jesus. And her yes. face just lit up like, is that true? And I said, well, let me talk to some men. I don't have a daughter. I talked to the next conference of men. I said, is that true? And one guy got up and he's saying, he says, when my daughter was five or six years old, we could tumble around like this, you know, had great. She walked in the living room one, one day, 13, 14, you know, earrings on, nylon stock. I didn't know who it was. They're scared. I'm scared. Yeah. I didn't know what to do. I mean, you're supposed to think the, I didn't think the, but I, I just didn't know. So all I did, I made, and at the time she needed most to hear her dad say, ah, oh, what a beautiful young woman you are. To speak that into her heart, he withdrew because of his own fear. And that's what, that's what my job is to tell guys, look, we can get real. We can get real, and we can go to Jesus, and we can say to our daughters things that we never, they never heard from, mom never heard. We can start this, so we can do it differently now because we have Jesus alongside of us. Yes, I, I like that to go out on for a break, and we will be right back. He was 40 years old, over six feet tall, and a state trooper. I am referring to a client of mine who was depressed. Session after session, we explored and searched for the missing pieces in his life. As I listened, a little boy began to emerge who was lonely and grieving over the loss of a father who had abandoned him and his mother. As a young child, he reasoned that something had to be wrong with him if his own father would leave him and never return. Abandonment by a father strikes at the very core of any child's self-esteem, but especially a son's. The wounds of father desertion were still raw and bleeding for this man. He was successful, but felt like a failure because he did not have the affirmation of his absent father. I have seen male clients well into their 50s still wanting to show their present or absent dads that they could amount to something. Abandonment is not the only way fathers negatively impact their children's lives. Fathers can be present bodily and yet absent emotionally when they fail to express their love and approval verbally, are too busy reaching the top of the career ladder, or absorbed with their own self-centered pursuits. Verbally, physically, or sexually abusive fathers can lock their children in cages of pain and distrust that haunt them all of their lives. It is not a sissy thing for fathers to hug their sons and tell them they are loved. And it means a lot to sons to hear their dads say, good job, son and sons experiencing father wounds stand to gain by forgiving their fathers and making a concerted effort to form a loving relationship with them when possible. All children need the presence, love, patience, and approval of their fathers. 
daughters need an appropriate, close, and affectionate relationship with their fathers so that they don't seek love and affection from other men in inappropriate ways. The reality is there is a hole within all of us that only a father can fill. And I believe this is directly related to the place within us that the Creator God designed for Himself, our Heavenly Father. We are truly blessed when we have present, faithful, and loving earthly fathers. But it is profoundly more important to have a loving and intimate relationship with God, the Heavenly Father. Even our earthly fathers cannot feel the ache in our hearts for Him. Maybe that is what your search is all about. Thanks for staying with us on Time for Hope as we continue discussing with our guest, Reverend Gordon Dalby, his book titled Sons of the Father. And Gordon, we could have done probably six shows uh, out uh, of do, this book. I do a whole book. weekend conference. Uh, yeah, we're going to, uh, we're going to, well, we can at least get them introduced to your book, sure. and, and I certainly encourage my viewers to make sure that they get a copy for themselves or for uh, a, a son mm -hmm. or a father or a friend. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. if they don't feel like it's something they fit, fit or that fits or them, website, they all, they all yeah. know of someone that does, and then we're, we'll give out your website okay, also okay. for your uh, for your other books. But uh, we were talking about men and women, and uh, remember I read on the last show last week about the woman that her husband was angry, and you bring, you, got, you take up a whole chapter, whole I think, chapter on anger. anger. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they, they, with this wound, they very often are very angry oh, with yes. their fathers, oh, aren't yes. they? Mm -hmm. And as we've said, they carry it over even into their marriages and, right. Sometimes, but an another thing we have not mentioned that comes out of this father wound is, and you brought it out, and it was really almost a new thought for me because mothers used to be blamed for everything. Mm -hmm. And they were blamed if a child be became a gay or became a homosexual. Mm -hmm. It was the mother's fault. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're saying it's this father wound that can, yes. le can lead to homosexuality. Yes, that's the re every, every man I've ever ministered to is having gender confusion. It's, there's a deep, deep father wound. And because he's wounded by his dad, he, he he doesn't want to identify with masculinity because it's too wounding to him. So he, he tends, and when the father's wounding to the son, he's usually wounding to everyone else in the family. And so the mother kind of looks to get from She's the son. She's to protect, yeah, protect the him. rest of the family I have a story, I have a story in there. I don't have yes, you do. time to do all, all of that. But I have a story of, of, of a man who find the lights went on and began to see how he really wanted to hold his daddy. Mm -hmm. It was so simple. He just wanted to hold, his little boy and his daddy was out of control all the time, and, and he just wanted to hold, and, and, and he didn't want to, he wanted to hold another man, yes. And the enemy of father of lies, so you need to hold another man. And he did, it was his daddy he wanted to be held by. And the mother, of course, he, he would turn to the mother exactly. and she would hold exactly. him. Uh, but you say very distinctly in your book that a mother can never heal a father wound. No, no matter how good a mother she is, right. we're we're not talking about bad mothers no, here. We're talking about those that want their sons to turn out to be real men, but no. they can't make real men out of no. their boys. Sometimes, you, if the father's not present, then the mother can do. I have stories of many mothers who got the boy involved in sports with a good coach they liked, or go to an uncle or a grandfather. Take it. A mother can arrange behind the scenes to have some masculine authority a figure come father. in. Thank you. Yes, a, a, uh -huh. a stepdad can do marvelous things for, for a young man. I've known many situations mm -hmm. where a stepfather ste uh, stepped in, as it were, and did a great oh, job yeah. with the, the Here's son. an interesting situation. My, my wife, Mary, she's a marvelous mom and a psychologist and everything. And uh, But she's a mom. And you know, our boy, I remember when he was about... Uh, four or five years old, it was raining outside, and uh, I'd gotten these, these rubber boots and everything like that, and I said, I said, he said, Daddy, it's, it's, let's go outside in the mud. And I said, that sounds great. We're getting already, and Mary comes out. Where are you going? I said, well, we're going outside and playing in the mud. And Mom says, 
uh, no, you're going to catch cold. You can't do that. And I said, uh, hold on, son, just a minute. I took Mary into this. I said, look, honey, I don't know how to express this, but boys like mud. We love to get dirty, and I promise you we will clean ourselves up. We will not track a speck of mud on your beautiful carpet, <laughs> but you have, to pr you have to bless him in this. This is a masculine thing he's doing, and, and I know you don't, it's not, you don't relate to it. That's okay. You're a woman. He is a boy child. And if you could go out there right now and just say, have a great time in the mud with your daddy, it would bless him. And what it would mean, see, if he, when he gets older, see, if, if, if he doesn't have a father to advocate for him and to say, hold on, in a, in a positive way, to, you're such a good mom. And I told him, you're such a good mom. Then you need to, let me interpret what it's like to be a boy for you, because you're a woman. I don't expect you to understand this kind of thing. If he doesn't have that, though, the mama says, don't go out in the mud you can't do it because you get dirty somebody and there's no man to intervene for him, then he doesn't. And then later he thinks, when I want to do something manly, the woman is going to cut me off. And, and so he's going to be angry at his wife later. before yeah. pay for that later, say. Yeah, when they want to go. I have a grandson that loves to deer hunt. And mm -hmm. of course I'm concerned while he's deer sure, hunting. Sure. But he does it and, and mm -hmm. hands off oh, and sure. back off. Sure, sure. And, uh, let him go deer hunting. But... Um, I think as a mother, I have something to add here. I, I know that my husband loved, he, he and my son loved to wrestle. He was wrestling him from the time he was just a little thing. And that's here good. I am that's just good. afraid he's going to get hurt, afraid mm, he's going to get yeah, hurt as your stuff. Mary was. But we let them go. Then it became a family tradition on Thanksgiving. After Thanksgiving, uh, they had a wrestling match. And my, my husband would put him down, which I thought he should have been allowing the son to win sometimes, okay? That was my opinion. We stood around and watched this, and my husband could put him down. I mean, right on up till he was in college playing football, mm -hmm. bring him down. One day, one Thanksgiving day, uh, my son took him down. And we were there, uh, uh, you great. know. See, my son, he's been, he's been lifting weights for five years, taking boxing class and stuff like that. He's no way. <laughs> I, I learned I learned a couple of years ago. We were just starting to wrestle and a little I bit. He gave me a shove and almost point. went through the drywall. I said, That's, we're going to have to talk things out. Don't you? On. Don't you agree with That's me that at thing. some point the father needs to give? But he didn't. But my it son, was genuine. It, was uh, genuine. it was genuine. Now the grandson's come along. They, they're wrestling their grandfather, and he's pretty strong. They said, Nana, he's, he's pretty strong. Mm -hmm. At a point, though, they let him win. They mm -hmm. let him win, the grandsons did, but they would give him a good workout before mm -hmm. uh, they well, would do that. it's important that the mother understands that the boy is different, and uh, if, if she, she doesn't have what it takes, and that's okay. That's the way God set it up. I mean, uh, but, but as from a, from a man's point of view, we say, well, no, okay, well, I didn't, all of us, none of us had fathers. Okay, so where do we go to get fathering. Well, I have a chapter called The Wolf Loves the Lone Sheep. And you have to start getting real together with other men and experience with other men. First of all, to find out that you're not the only man with this problem. We all got to get the shame goes away when you realize we're all in it together. Then we go to Father God and say, Father God, I didn't get what I needed as a man. You are the father, even of my earthly dad. We're going to ask you to give it to him. We're going to get real. We're going to talk things over. We're going to go to you bring the wound to you, and we're going to trust you to heal us. And so we're going to go out with that idea. And I talked too long and didn't let you get uh, in um, uh, some things that could have been uh, gotten in. But we can end with this, uh, uh, which I so much appreciate. There are no perfect fathers. We're not trying to come down on fathers. No. But they need to be willing to admit uh, to their sons uh, where they failed them. Past should not be cursed, you say, but redeemed. And I added by forgiving and loving their fathers. This is, these are men with wounded, uh, with father wounds. Realistically, not a, a, a fantasy father, a real father. And faithfully as an adult, after they have found this relationship mm, that right. you're talking about with uh, Father God. It has been a treat, Gordon, having you. But I, we've just I say this very often on my show. We've just t uh, touched the tip of the iceberg mm -hmm. about what you have in your... It's like a class. 
I told my, my staff, some of my staff members that. I said, it's like taking a class, this book mm. is. So I am really encouraging our viewers to get a copy of this. I think it could be used in a classroom, by a the way. A men all over the uh, world could use it. Could yeah. use it has this. chapter questions. And pastors could use this to yeah. get, you know, to understand the needs of the men uh, mm -hmm. in their churches and so forth. So I'm really, really giving your book a push, a I great job, it. a great job. And thanks again for coming uh, to appear on Time for Hope. And I have something to share with you uh, from a viewer. Dear Dr. Frieda, please pray for my 36-year-old son. He grew up in an unhappy home as my husband was abusive to me. He still experiences feelings of rejection due to his relationship with his father. And we didn't mention that word rejection, but it is a painful part of the father wound. Pray for God to heal my son's heart and please pray for my husband and our marriage. They're in great need. So you might want to join us as a team member in praying for uh, this person, but we faithfully cover the prayer requests that come into Time for Hope. Then I have an encouraging note. I came across your program, Time for Hope, this morning for the very first time. And I must say, I was edified and inspired beyond belief. It is truly a blessing. Thank you. I wish I had known about Time for Hope a long time ago. Maybe my life would be in a better place than where it is now. We have prayed for this person and we will uh, we honor each and every prayer request that comes in to Time for Hope. We hope we're going to hear that she finds that better place. It might be a father wound. It can even be a mother wound. Um, uh, women can be wounded by their mothers also. And I'm going to talk to Gordon about writing that book maybe. Uh, so thanks so much for watching uh, us uh, on Time for Hope and hearing what Gordon has had to share, and I encourage you to get a copy of Gordon's book. Go to his website, and he has other books uh, there. And of course, join us again next week on Time for Hope. A free fact sheet that contains additional information about today's topic is available upon request from our ministry. You can also receive a copy of today's resource for $19 plus $3 shipping and handling. To receive the free fact sheet or our guest's book or both, you may call us at 1-800-669-9133. Write us at Post Office Box 2169, Spartanburg, South Carolina, 29304. Or visit our website at timeforhope.org. When you call or write, please prayerfully consider a donation to our ministry. Our ministry's mission is to offer hope to discouraged and hurting people. As we continue to give out messages of hope, you can become a member of our team by sending us a financial gift of any amount. When you send your gift to support Time for Hope, you are joining us in offering hope to many viewers who might believe there is no hope for their situation. And you're also enabling us to inform and inspire some viewers to expand our mission as they learn and in turn can minister more effectively to hurting people around them. Until next time, have a great week. And remember, it is time for hope.